Hi everyone, it's Melissa, and today I am doing the Seven Deadly Sins book tag. I saw Kim do this at Middle of the Book March, and I just thought it looked like a lot of fun. So this is basically the Seven Deadly Sins as prompts for books. So the first one is Pride, a book you love saying you read for the purpose of flexing or because it makes you sound smart. I don't really do this, I don't think. I couldn't think of a book that I would mention, oh yes, I read X, Y, or Z, in order to sound smart. I think maybe just talking about being a reader in general, I might have used that to sound smart, but I couldn't think of a specific book necessarily. If I was going to choose any book, it would probably be some sort of textbook that I had to read for university. I don't really have a lot of those books anymore. Um, I had to read a book on st statistical analysis and I mean that did make me, well, it made me feel really stupid reading it because it was a lot. <laughs> But having read it makes me feel intelligent, although I probably don't remember most of what I learned because it's been like a decade since I was in grad school. But uh, yeah, I had to read uh, and use a textbook on statistical analysis using a programming uh, language called R. I think the book was just called The R Book. And um, I'm having flashbacks to stats now. But anyway, that let's call that my answer. That's my flex. Um, greed, a book you wouldn't let anyone borrow. So for the most part, I'm, I am not too fussy about my books and I will lend them to people, but I'll have like, I'll keep track of who has what because I'm also very frugal and I don't want to rebuy things. Um, however, anything that I had as a child that is my copy I had as a child, I probably wouldn't lend out because I have a certain attachment to it or I'm sentimental about the copy that I read. So I pulled a couple of examples. So the first being On the Banks of Plum Creek by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I have a couple more in the Little House series, but I didn't pull those ones because I found those copies as an adult secondhand. Um, because my original Little House in the Big Woods, I think it was, like, fell apart, like, disintegrated. <laughs> um, but this is my original copy that I read as a child. You can still see there's, like, some paint or marker on some of them. Um, like, it is really beat up. I don't actually think that my phone is picking up just how beat up this book really is. But this is the copy that I read and I would never lend this to anybody ever. Um, and my other example for this is my Anne of Green Gables series. So I have all eight books and I have them all matching in this edition, which I don't know if you can get these anymore. Um, I've seen many different editions of the Anne novels and I prefer the artwork of the ones that I have. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but the spine is like really cracked and I read the first, well I read all of them, but specifically the first one I read many times and it's very worn and I have very strong memories of this and Plum Creek of reading them and very vivid memories of holding these specific books. So I would definitely not lend those out to anybody. Next is Wrath, a book you hate read or one that makes you angry when you think about it. So I'm going to go with A Dirty Job by, I want to say the author is Christopher Moore. Probably wouldn't have finished this book except that I was reading it for a book club, my own book club that I was leading. So I kind of had to finish the book and oh man, I hated it. It's about someone who becomes a grim reaper and has to collect souls. Its premise sounded fairly similar to a TV show that I love called Dead Like Me, 
And so I thought I would love it. And also it is kind of like a dark comedy, like the book is, as well as the TV show. So I should have loved it, but it it did not age well, I guess. I don't think the book is that old, but um, I was offended by a lot of it. It was trying to be sentimental in parts, but falling flat on its face because it just undercut every, like, actually heartfelt moment with some stupid joke. And I even did a whole video comparing Dead Like Me to A Dirty Job and um, why I think the book sucks, which I try not to rant too, too much on my channel. I mean, we all rant every now and again. But by and large, if I don't like a book, I tend to just say, these are things I didn't like about it and I move on. Or if I had like mixed feelings, I will state what I liked and disliked about it. But I try to focus more of my energy on talking about books that I love and why I love them so much. Sometimes there's a book so bad that I just can't do that. And I had to get that one off of my chest. So that's my answer for something I've hate read. Next is Envy, a book you bought because you saw it on someone's channel. I mean, there's probably a lot of examples, but I chose one of a book that I hadn't heard of previously at all. And then I just so happened to see it in the bookstore after someone had mentioned it on their channel and bought it very much on a whim. Um, so that is Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. I still haven't read this possibly very soon. This is currently on a pile of possibilities for me. So maybe I'll get to it in the next week or two. But as of filming, I still haven't read this. So I first heard about this um, from Sam at Paper Not Books. It's one of her favorite novels. And I remember hearing about it and I didn't think much of it. And then I was at a bookstore and I had some birthday money like burning a hole in my pocket. And I saw this book in the science fiction section and I read the back blurb and just thought, yes, this sounds like my type of book. Definitely I wouldn't have picked this up if I hadn't heard um, a booktuber rave about it, essentially. Um, the next is Lust, a cover buy, a book you bought because it was pretty. So I don't know how pretty I would say this is. I, I couldn't think of anything that was a cover buy on its own. Like a lot of the very pretty books I have, while they're pretty, that wasn't the reason I bought them. This one isn't necessarily the most beautiful cover, but it definitely was an impulse purchase. So I'm going with this one. And it's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tukar Tukarczyk. <laughs> I always stumble over her name. Um, and I do like the cover. I don't think it's particularly striking, but I do like it. But it was the title that drew me in. I was in my local independent bookstore and I just wanted to buy a book and I didn't really have anything in mind specifically and so I was just kind of browsing and I saw this one and just the title drive your plow over the bones of the dead I just thought was very striking I knew nothing about it after I bought it then I started hearing people talk about it on their channels I think I also read the blurb before I bought it but um it was definitely the title that drew me to this so I'm going to count this for that prompt Next is Gluttony, a book you really didn't need but purchased anyway. So this one, I'm I'm also kind of stretching <laughs> this. I think it's still in the spirit of it. In terms of something I really didn't need, I, I thought what fit this best are duplicates. So I love Tolkien. If you've been following me for a while, I've mentioned Tolkien probably more than once. And I just, I really love Lord of the Rings. And the Hobbit, but specifically um, Lord of the Rings. My husband also enjoys Lord of the Rings, and we each had our own copies of Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and The Silmarillion before we started dating. And I didn't need to keep my copies. Like once we put all of our books together to form our little library here, um, we don't need to have two copies of. The Lord of the Rings. Um, we don't need the two copies of The Hobbit. Actually, we have, I think, maybe actually three copies of The Hobbit. We don't need our two copies of The Silmarillion. But he was not willing to give up his. 
nor would I have wanted him to. He has really nice additions. And I didn't want to give up mine either. So I think if I could change this to a book you really didn't need but purchase anyway, it really didn't need but kept anyway, This, these are the ones. The Tolkien Collection in general. So I didn't want to get rid of mine because similar to Reese, a similar reason to why um, I wouldn't lend out On the Banks of Plum Creek or my Anne of Green Gables books. I have very vivid memories of reading these books in high school, these specific books. And I like this edition. It's the HarperCollins edition that is um, like plain black, but I'll try to see if I can get the light to catch it. It's, it's not embossed. It's just kind of like the shiny um, design. There's Fellowship. Same thing with the two towers. You can kind of see that like glossy illustration if you hit it just right. And um, I have the same additions in um, The Hobbit and The Silmarillion. And I really like them because I can kind of imagine an, an old timey tome that was like cloth bound or leather bound um, that wouldn't have like an illustrated cover, but maybe would have like a design. So I like, I like the look of these. And again, I have fond memories and like these are, this is my set and I wanted to keep them. But my husband, when I met him, he had these editions, which are a different um, HarperCollins edition that have the John Howe illustrations for the cover. And like John Howe is my favorite Tolkien artist. I just love his stuff. Um, so I understand why my husband didn't want to get rid of these. I wouldn't want to give up his copies either because the um, illustrated covers are really gorgeous. So that's Fellowship. Here's the two towers. His are also really worn. You can see like where they've been folded and creased. And here's Return of the King. The last one is Sloth, a genre you read when you don't feel like using your brain. And this isn't a genre, but I think uh, middle grade in general, I read when I don't want to have to use my brain too hard because the reading level is going to be, you know, for children. And although children's books can deal with hard topics. It's not going to be like anything as intense as might be in adult fiction. That's The Last Sin. Um, I tag everyone who wants to do this. I will mention maybe a couple of people specifically, um, but I haven't really seen anyone do this. So I would say um, if you're watching this and want to do it, please do it. But I will mention uh, Karen from Run Right reads, although I know she's busy with Crimpathon, but if she has time to do it. Um, Jen the Librarian, uh, Heidi from My Bookish Life. Is that your channel name? My Book Life. My Bookish Life. Heidi. <laughs> if you don't have a channel, please let me know your answer to these prompts below and we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye.